Thank you very much, Jürgen, for a nice introduction. And I would like also to thank organizing committee and um, Carmen to give me an opportunity to make a summary of what we know about IgG in MSFS and post-COVID. Uh, so that's my disclosure. I have nothing to disclose. Um, the application of immunoglobulins goes uh, back more than one century um, to the pre-antibiotic era when patients um, were given um, immunoglobulins just to improve the immunity. What it actually is, immunoglobulins is a pulled extraction of antibodies from more than 10,000 up to 100,000 donors. And this uh, preparation consists of antibodies against different pathogens, a broad range of pathogens, as well as antigens um, and self-antigens. Um, the primary um, application of immunoglobulin was um, approved to um, improve uh, immune, immunodeficiency, to, to treat immunodeficiency in patients with primary immunodeficiency or secondary immunodeficiency due to oncology, uh, um, on oncological diseases or um, um, immunosuppressive therapy. And since 1950s, uh, we know that um, also immunoglobulins were applied for to treat uh, neuro, uh, neurological autoimmune diseases. So we, we are talking, Sean, uh, already um, for two days about the role of uh, autoimmunity um, in development of MHCFS and post-COVID. And Birgit gave yesterday a brilliant um, explanation of involvement of B and T cells uh, in development of MHCFS and post-COVID. And um, therefore, it's... Um, very logical to apply this also in MECFS, um, um, similar to neurological diseases. And these are um, also, we don't completely understand the uh, um, um, efficacy or um, effect of mechanism of um, IVIG in, um, uh, to treat um, autoimmune diseases. There are um, several um, target uh, places where um, um, IgG can um, uh, interact with immune, uh, with immune system. First of all, um, IgG or antibodies um, consistors is pretty known about uh, from um, out of uh, FAP variable um, um, part and uh, constant part and variable part is antigen specific and it can bind to anti antigenic receptor and therefore block um, ac activation of T and T in B cells and pre prevent activation and proliferation of these cells and lead also to increase of apoptosis. It can also bind with this FAP fragment to different autoantibody cytokines um, and, uh, and eliminate this from the circulation, as well as polarize uh, T cells uh, from conventional to regulatory T cells, which are uh, known to be important to uh, combat autoimmune diseases. Uh, it can also sequence or complement, that is also important in different processes, and inhibit complement cascades. And it's, it is known to, um, uh, to interact with um, uh, receptors of, of, for FC receptors to block uh, activating receptors of immune, uh, innate, uh, innate immune cells and uh, express inhibitor receptors in these cells uh, and then um, decrease the immune response. And finally, it can also increase lysosomal autoantibody degradation due to saturation of um, uh, FC uh, receptor, native receptor. Um, um, in these cells. So, the first study um, that um, described um, the um, implementation of IVIG in patients with MSFS uh, is from 1990 that uh, analyzed 49 patients and uh, they provided three infusions, two gram per kilogram body weights, uh, three times, and then they performed the follow up analysis. And uh, they um, performed uh, as follow-up uh, physical as well as psychiatrical analysis. And what they find out that all of these patients showed significant improvement. Then, uh, ten years, uh, seven years later, the same group tried to uh, look what the titrate, the, the level of immunoglobulin therapy. They applied to the patient and they provide different, um, um, different doses, 0 0.5, 1 gram and 2 gram body weight per month and follow up thereafter. And they looked uh, of Karnovsky performance index showing the fatigue and cognitive uh, performance. And what they found out, unfortunately, 
all the groups improved, but since placebo also improved, they couldn't show um, the statistical, statistical significance for the immunoglobulins. Another study from the same year, 1997, I apologize for this uh, bad quality of the, of the slide, it's the original one, they looked for um, um, for the effect of um, IgG in patients, uh, uh, young patients between 12 and, uh, 12 and eight years, uh, 18 years old, and they applied uh, one gram per kilogram body weight in this patient, three infusions, and they after they looked at their functional performance, school attendance, school work, social activity, and physical activity. And as you can see here, already in months uh, three follow up, they um, uh, demonstrated um, significant improvement of this functional score, and for, which was even better at uh, six months follow up. Um, that is a, um, another study performed by a group of Carmen. Um, they applied, um, uh, this before I showed you, it was IVIG intravenous um, application, and this is the first one applied subcutaneously in patients with CFS and uh, moderate or slight um, IgG or IgG subclass deficiency. They uh, also performed a uh, dose escalation um, and therapy from 0.2 gram per kilogram uh, body weight up to uh, 0.8 gram per kilogram body weight um, during the 12th uh, month, and then they had a follow-up for more than um, 15 months. And there is also the different um, uh, different assessment of uh, of the efficacy, Bell scale, child fatigue, and so on. And what they found out was. First of all, uh, the patient showed a, a significant improvement of the uh, number of the infectious diseases per year, which is very important. We know that each infectious episode uh, can aggravate their, um, the general status of the patient. And then looking of their um, at the primary endpoint, the shoulder fatigue score and uh, physical activity SF36, you can see that from the month six, the patients show significant improvement of their uh, fatigue score and as well as physical activity demonstrated here. We also performed, our group performed a study on um, IVHD in patients uh, after, um, after COVID-19. We, uh, we had three, uh, three groups of uh, this study, um, each one wa um, was 10 patients, and we gave our patients uh, three um, infusions, uh, 0.5 gram per kilogram body weight, three times, and then performed follow-up for 24 weeks. And we performed self-assessment questionnaire, uh, also as well as neurocognitive test and hand grip test and immunological analysis. And I would like to demonstrate you what you found out. First of all, the ISRIC score, um, demonstrating fatigue and neurocognitive tests decrease significantly in the group of patients uh, that are um, under IVAG therapy. In contrast, patients under Budizonid and supportive care patients showed slightly improvement and there was a, a significant statistical significance between this group and two, uh, the IVAG group and two other groups as control groups. And then we look at the uh, symptoms um, in, uh, in certain symptoms, we observe in all IVAG patients significant improvement of all these symptoms illustrated here. In comparison, you can see here, patients under Badazinit, um, only a couple of them um, responded to the therapy as well as norm pharmacological supportive care um, therapy. Their improvement was not significantly, uh, statistically significant. Um, there is also several other studies demonstrated positive effect of IVIG um, in patients um, with uh, COVID-associated diseases. Uh, the study from Thompson in frontier immunology showed clinical benefit in all six patients, a small study with uh, post-COVID. There is also a large um, meta-analysis study, oh, I'm sorry, a meta-analysis study in frontier neuroscience 2023 Altogether, 30, 32 clinical cases of COVID-19 associated neurological disorders, and they were treated by IVIG, and almost everybody, 31 from 30 um, studies demonstrated, um, cases demonstrated partial or even complete response after IVIG treatment. There are two different other studies that are ongoing that try to um, um, demonstrate the effect of IVIG and um, in the post-COVID, they are running, and we are looking forward to see the results. Just to sum up, 
what I um, take home message. Uh, what I've showed you before, the IG, uh, IG, um, IVIG therapy has a potential to improve the clinical cause of ME-CFS um, or Voskovic syndrome. Uh, but what we are missing is a large validation study, uh, as for many other uh, uh, applications, that shows the real um, effect of IHD. We need, of course, um, to understand what is the real, um, um, is the real cause of response versus non-response. And for this, we need biomarkers that allow us to discriminate patients that will respond for this, not only for the patient, but also to say the high cost associated with IVIG. And what is also pretty unclear is what should be the doses to um, improve the, um, the general status of the patients, how often should we give it and how long. And with that, I would like to thank the, my group who um, pre, um, we, uh, contributed to this study and I would like to thank you for your attention. I am happy to uh, take your questions. Thank you, Nina. Just in time, perfect timing. Thank you so much. We have time for a question out of the audience. Um, how long time does uh, the uh, EVIG uh, work? I mean, um, you have a half-life of the immunoglobulins mm -hmm. uh, of three uh, weeks, maybe. How, lo how, yeah. how long time do you see the responses uh, lasting? Last. Um, it's very um, as a different, um, as we can see here from the study of uh, Carmen, uh, even three uh, months after the uh, um, dis um, discontinuation of the therapy, patients showed um, the improvement of the symptoms. However, I know if I take my patients from the therapy, if I put the patient on the therapy, they're happy, but if you stop it, the symptoms will come back. Just I don't have, have a study for this, but in a couple of months, they will have the symptoms again back, unfortunately. Thank you very much for this uh, wonderful presentation and suggestion. I think that the IVIG may be an ideal therapy in this case because of the multiple autoantibodies that are produced in the disease. We have a lot of experience in different autoimmune diseases, from ITP to even lupus, and even lupus psychosis and lupus depression. But the mechanism which we have to add is the presence of anti-idiotypic antibodies to the pathogenic autoantibody because it's produced from 20,000 healthy subjects which do not have the autoantibodies. And therefore, according to the idiotypic network of Yerne, Nobel Prize, 1988, I think that the main mechanism is the anti-idiotypic antibodies. The second point that I want to raise is almost no side effects to IVIG, except of the painful feeling of the head of the hospital that believes that it is expensive. Yeah. But it's not any more expensive more than immune absorption or the new monoclonal antibodies, etc. Thank you. Thank you very much for the discussion. And thank you, Nina, for your talk.